Okay, so this is the first installment of what we did in AP Euro. You can see the dates on the bottom right there, September 1st through September 9th. I'm hoping these little videos kind of uh, shortly recap, or in briefly, I should say, recap the things that we did this week, and hopefully you can watch them and use them as a way to try to remember the things that we talked about. So this is going to be a total of six class periods total. Try to do it in less than 10 minutes. Hopefully it helps you out here a little bit. All right, so the first couple things we talked about here were the ways that people made money. All right, <clears throat> the topics for this video are different city-states like Florence, Venice, and Rome, as well as the definition of humanism or the multiple definitions of humanism and how humanism uh, applied to art, literature, and the Renaissance in general. So we have Venice, Florence, Rome, and how they made their money, and we also kind of hit some of the smaller city-states like you can see over here on the map. These are different places that we talked a little bit about. Places like Genoa, Two Sicilies, and then mostly the other, uh, the big three that we talked about are listed here on the board. All right, so a little bit of review. First thing you got to remember is that the Renaissance only occurs because of economic prosperity. Economic prosperity, which also came hand in hand or went hand in hand, I should say, with political stability. And then you have the three, the big ones that I mentioned on the last slide over here. This picture right here is of Florence. And you should remember that Florence made their money as bankers for the Pope. The common person made their living off of working in the wool industry, which is the industry that the Medici invested in. Down here in the bottom, you've got Rome, ancient Rome. And I put a picture of the Colosseum, which isn't really how they made their money in the Renaissance, but you can um, hopefully remember lots of good ruins, lots of different examples of humanism down there and also um, they made their money from banking I'm sorry from papal business not papal banking Florence was papal banking Rome was papal business and then on the far right over here you have Venice and you should remember Venice as a port city they made their money off of sea trade remember the arsenal where they make all the ships and all the business coming from uh, eastern part of Europe, from the Middle East, brought into Venice, put on ships and sent out uh, throughout the rest of Europe and Africa and places like that. So remember the political stability, remember the economic prosperity, remember that uh, Milan, even though I don't have it up here, was a signore like Florence. Signore is ruled by one person, the Medici in Florence, the Savorza family in Milan. Remember Venice was an oligarchy, an oligarchy of merchants. Oligarchy means rule by few, and the merchants of Venice that's where the Shakespeare play comes from, ran the city, made it a great city, made it a prosperous city, and uh, Rome was run by the Pope and papal business. All right, so this economic prosperity and political stability allows for, as you can read right here, accomplishes an art. Remember, this is Da Vinci, uh, some of his work over here on the far right. Remember, all these things are based on humanism. And one of the things you need to get out of this week was what was humanism? Humanism was a revival of the past. That's why I so showed you this uh, picture of ancient Rome down here on the bottom. Okay, revival of antiquity, which is ancient Greece, ancient Rome. Remember, um, humanism study of ancient classics, but also of appreciation for the human body and how the human body functions. Remember words like human, uh, humans are capable of great things and they're intelligent, great creatures and all that kind of stuff. So this picture that da Vinci drew over there doing some of his research is how the body functioned and how the body worked. Remember when it came to literature, we looked at uh, the ancient Roman writer Cicero and the ancient Greek writer Homer and the different things that they wrote about and how they made or described, I should say, people and people's abilities. Uh, remember, we read the prince. We looked at the prince, but the prince would be a humanist or, I'm sorry, a Renaissance era book, but not in the humanist style. He was much more against the common person, okay, much more pessimistic, while humanist 
literature is much more optimistic. And then there was the art. Okay, the bottom picture here is the Sistine Chapel. The top picture is the Last Supper, the Sistine Chapel, obviously, in Rome. The Last Supper, Last Supper, there we go. The Last Supper is in Milan. These are great examples of humanism and some of the terms I have here coming up on the next slide. And then you also have this right here. This is my transition from the previous, you know, um, humanism into secularism. This is a very, very famous picture um, that's cool about it is this little mirror right here. If you look closely at it, can't see that in black probably, these two people are actually painted in the mirror and then the artist who's a lesser known renaissance artist but still you know one of many great ones i guess he paints himself there in the picture also if you look closely so just an example of the artists wanting to show off and the artists wanting to sign their work and get credit for what they were doing which obviously they they should deserve so these pictures here show you kind of the gamut of humanism you have the uh, ancient stuff or biblical stuff on the top and bottom. You have secularism and individualism with this painting in the middle. All right. Remember these terms. Patronage is huge for the Renaissance artist. Making money or getting paid to do their work. It wasn't for patronage. You would not have a lot of the art that you have. Fresco was painting in wet plaster. Chiaroscuro was the shadowing and light and shadow techniques to make these pictures look like they looked. They looked very, very naturalistic. All right, naturalistic is different than realism. Realism is more of a content, where naturalistic is more of a style. They wanted these people to look as much like they did as they did. It looks like a photograph of the time. And remember the single point perspective notes that we had, how they focused you in on one specific thing, and that's what they wanted to do. All right, remember, humanists saw people as good. They saw people, uh, people, people as being very capable, uh, positive, optimistic view of people. Humanists saw that. There's a couple names right there you got to remember. You should review them. Some of their works are in the packet. We'll go into more detail on some of them next week. But he was the first person to coin the phrase patriarch. The patriarch was the first to coin the phrase humanism. Mirandola is one of the um, Platonian Academy in Florence guys. And Lorenzo Valla is really famous for his um, historical research proving older documents wrong. All right. The Renaissance, remember, this is upper class art. All right. It's not all thought about the same way. Remember this art. Think about it from a rich person's point of view. Think about it from a working class point of view. The working class person, the poor person is not going to be able to afford this art. And the last little review here is Machiavelli. All right, here it is. Machiavelli, the prince. Those are just some of the words we talked about in class to reassociate with the prince. Um, <clears throat> I have over here on the far right the word humanist with a question mark. Was he really a humanist? Well, he's a Renaissance writer, but as I said a few minutes ago, he's not really into the humanist style, those words from the last page. All right, these words on the top of this page, words on the top of this page, oh, are very different from the words on the bottom of this. Uh, this page here. So you remember the last page where it talked about positive, optimistic, capable, all that kind of stuff? That's not what Machiavelli was saying, at least not about common people, rich people, yes, for sure. Okay, so I hope this helps a little bit. Hopefully they get better as we go through the year because this wasn't great, but it gives you a quick little reminder of the kind of things we talked about and the kind of things you should review. If this doesn't give you all the information, at least it gives you the topics that you need to review. All right. See you. See you.